There will be a time in your life where, you know, you may have a little crush or on a girl or something, and it will come in handy. <laughs> I promise. Until I got my wife. That was actually harder said than done. You know, we got a long history. I had to put a bunch of songs on the radio about her to piss her off. Get her. <laughs> that and I built a house like where she had to pass it every time she came home from college or every time her and her mama had to go to work, they had to <laughs> pass this big ass house. Was, just don't give a redneck no money, man. We, we're gonna make somebody jealous. You guys dated in high school, didn't you? She was uh she was a senior when we met. She was she was, uh, I wasn't no creep, you know. Um, but yeah, she, I, I, I was, this is a true story. It sounds awful. Um, but I, I was working on some community service hours at a church. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the church her family went to. And uh, oh yeah, so that's how, <laughs> that's how we met. Um, my cousin was like the youth minister there. And I was like, hey, dude, you can like. Throw me some extra hours on there. <laughs> I mean, I'll come do whatever you want me to do, but still. But no, I met her there, and her mama was not having it. <laughs> I mean, not having it. And for good reason. Like, I was running with a rough group of dudes. And to this day, I, like I will say, um, it, you know, uh, some folks may say it's not something to be proud of, but I, I still run with them boys. I, I still run with a rowdy-ass bunch. And they're my people, man. That's... that's uh, you know, I, I tend to see the, the good in folks to a fault. <laughs> yeah, and I like being around gangsters. What can I say? <laughs> um, <laughs> motorcycle club guys. That's But um, but no, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. I got off track a little bit there again. Apologize. It's all right. It's <laughs> fun watching. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. There you go. And chase it anywhere. So you're, uh, you met your wife in high school, and then you guys kind of split up a little bit, then you built a gigantic house that she had to pass by? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so that? we didn't see or speak to each other for five years. And then, um, you know, in that time, I just, man, my goal in the music business was to sell out the Georgia Theater. Um, and it's about 15 minutes from my house. And I did that when I was 19 or 20. Um, so everything from there has been kind of, you know, just a pretty cool-ass bonus. Right. Um <laughs> But, but yeah, all I wanted to do was put a double wide on this piece of <laughs> land that was across from Hurricane Shoals down, you know, in our hometown. And my, actually it wasn't a double wide, it was a single wide, that, and I had the whole thing picked out. You know, it was, I was a bachelor dude, I was gonna be single forever, and I had real plans to just stay on my bus all the time. But I told my manager, it, you know, my manager at the time and my business manager were like, dude, just just build a house. You can, you're can, you allowed to build a house, you know, you can afford it. So I was like, all right, well, then I'm going to build a tall one so she can see it. <laughs> you can't miss it coming through the woods, man. It's like, oh, okay. If it worked, <laughs> you know, you do that and put some, put some songs on the radio. Like I got a <laughs> kick out of that. I was like, I know she's moving on dating somebody else. I bet it pisses him <laughs> off. Uh -huh. Do you know he's a country dude? He turns on the radio. I'm going to listen to me some country. Hurt some bitches again. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was like, that, I will say, that was like kind of a, a guilty thing. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have had as much fun with that as I did. But <laughs> at the same time, glad I did it. <laughs> Got my hot wife. Now, how did you propose? We were talking earlier in the week about proposals. Was it romantic or did you just? Um, I lied. <laughs> um, but I actually um, told her I was going to Illinois hunting, and I had some pictures of me, like, in Illinois with this time stamp on the picture. You know, you send it, and it tells you where it was taken and all. So uh, I had some of those from the year before. <laughs> so I was sending her pictures up in the tree with, like, face paint on and all this stuff like I was deer hunting. And, and I sent her and, and a bunch of her girlfriends uh, – to go get their nails done and all this other stuff. And then I said, um, and there's a little surprise for you um, at the end of it or something. But I had uh, Becky, who was, I told you my cousin was the youth minister at that right. church. His wife, Becky, and Amber were always really close. So she went with them. And at the end of it, she said, you know, Doug's doing this thing over at Mount Olive. That was a church I met her at. And um, 
you know, they're fixing up the youth room and all that stuff. And it that was the room I met her in was the youth room upstairs in the gym. And when she got upstairs, I was there and I played her a song that I wrote her. Um, and then hit a knee, boy. Uh -huh. Just <laughs> went on down with it in front of God and everybody. It was n nervous as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yes, yeah, she said yes. And, and uh, man, it's been... It's been awesome. It's one of the smartest things I ever did in my life. Oh, that's so amazing. Yeah. But she ain't no dog. I, I hear you. you but you want the mom no over joke. first. Did you ask her mom first? Oh, yeah, and her brothers. Her, the song I wrote her was about, you know, not being able to ask her dad. Um, uh, he passed away in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I went, went and talked to her mom. Oddly, my, my mother-in-law is like, my ambassador now. She's like <laughs> my biggest fan. I love that woman. She like if we get an argument or something, there's like eight, maybe nine times out of ten, she has my side. Wow. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> she comes out on the road with us. Like oh, when really? a little man comes out with Amber, she'll come she'll come out on the road so she can kinda give us a hand with him and and let us spend some time. Ah, uh, you said you had a surprise for the last song? Oh, yeah, man. I can't pack it. Not more ways than one. Um, <laughs> Hello. I didn't mean it. So, all right, this last one, y'all. I, I wanted to write a song, speaking of my son, I wanted to write a song about my son. Um, and when it came that time, you know, uh, it didn't happen overnight, you know, as, as far as getting pregnant went. Uh, and there was, there was a story out about that and stuff. But um, I just figured, like, you pull the goalie and... It's go, you know, <laughs> and it didn't quite go down like that. You know. <laughs> so I thought about writing a song about, you know, the the little struggle. And I say the little struggle, it was big to us, but, you know, thought about writing a song about that struggle. And then thought about, you know, the reality of the situation is we, we dealt with it for a very short amount of time compared to some folks that spend years and years and years and years, you know, trying to get pregnant and it not happen. And, and, you don't want to be that guy to try to be the voice of people who struggle with that when when you didn't struggle with it for you know very long. Right. So uh, that was out. Then then I I was like, man, you know, everybody says that you know when you hold the baby, everything changes, and it's just a moment. So I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll write one about that. You know, the the birth and all that stuff. But. Uh, at, Against all the advice from every man I know, you know, who said, dude, don't watch it. Man, I'm serious. You'll never look <laughs> at it the same. You know, I couldn't help it. I watched everything. I watched when they broke her water. <laughs> when they broke her, that was rough. When that happened, I was like, shit, this is re it's going down in here, man. Like, for real. Oh, I'm telling you, I gained so much respect for my wife. I'm fellas, I'm going to tell you if it was up to us to have kids. The human, we wouldn't exist. <laughs> it would have ended with the caveman. We'd been like, no, Bartholomew, you didn't see what happened to Bartholomew. We ain't doing it. We ain't gonna do it. We'd have just died out a long time ago with the dinosaurs, probably. 